Hello and welcome back, finally, <laughs> to another episode of 8-Bit Keys. In this episode, I want to talk about toy keyboards. Now, if you go back to the 1980s, um, there were a lot of different varieties of keyboards. I mean, on one hand, you had the toddler toys, and then there were all these different stepping stones all the way up to the professional keyboards that were used by the famous musicians. And you could, depending on how much money you wanted to spend, you could get anything in between. So what's happened in the last 30 years? Well, have you ever heard the phrase, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer? Well, that's what's been happening in the world of keyboards over the last 30 years. It seems like all of the keyboards, due to the advancement of technology, have gotten better and better and better. And they've also gotten bigger and bigger and bigger, almost like the automotive industry. I mean, all the sedans and cars and stuff have now transformed into SUVs. And that's kind of what's happened. If you go down the aisle of like an electronic store and you look at all the keyboards for sale, like amateur keyboards and stuff, you'll notice they're all basically full-size keyboards. And I don't mean full-size in that they have 88 keys, but I mean full-size in that they have the big keys, the, the standard piano-sized keys, uh, you know, none of the, uh, you know, little stuff that you see, you know, like this. So what's happened over the last 30 years, there's been like this divide and split where a certain type of keyboards have gotten all better and bigger and everything else has gotten junkier and cheaper. And there's sort of a void in uh, the kind of the middle ground that, that's just not there anymore. But anyway, what I want to do in this episode is take a look at these uh, toy keyboards that are all recent, like within the last five years or so, and um, take a look and see what, what we have today. Let's have a look at this one. I found it on the shelf of Target in the toy department, and it caught my eye. It was only $19, so I thought, what the heck? And I brought it home. Um, apparently, this is not a music keyboard. Rather, it is a meowsic <laughs> keyboard. Well, uh, let's unbox this thing and see what it can do. Here's the manual. I, I stand corrected. The name of this keyboard is the B Meowsic, and uh, it is targeted to kids aged two to six. Uh, looks like it runs on four AA batteries. It has this uh, nifty carry handle on the back, and it has this microphone you can sing into, and if you want to retract it, you can press this button. Now, looking at this thing, there are absolutely no input or output ports on this thing anywhere. Not even an external power port or a headphone port. So that would make it tough to record anything from it. So let's try it out. Uh, here's the on switch. It defaults to the piano instrument. But it doesn't sound much like a piano to me, which is weird considering this thing obviously uses digital samples. I can see that it is two voice polyphonic. Still, that's better than most toy keyboards of the 1980s that only had one voice. Let's try out the bells instrument. And of course the meow. Meow, 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 meow. Okay, wait, I definitely have to play this. And there's an organ. And last, the banjo. There are five rhythms to pick from. Don't really care for any of them. According to the manual, there are 20 pre-recorded songs and seven witty kitty songs. So um, to listen to these, you just press the button on the left and it will randomly play one of the 20 songs or press the cat button on the right to hear a random kitty song. Now one thing I found interesting about this is that all of the songs are literally just one giant sample, like listening to an mp3 file or something. I mean, they aren't using the keyboard's built-in instruments to play these. That being the case, I doubt many people have ever heard a song composed entirely out of instruments on this keyboard. So it's time to change that. But first, I need to take this thing apart so I can install some sort of line output jack for recording. This thing had a remarkable number of screws holding it together. One thing I can say about this keyboard is that it's built like a tank, which is probably a good thing if the target audience is two years old. <laughs> anyway, uh, looks like it needs a bit of prying around the ears. Okay, now we get to see the inside of the B Meowsic keyboard. It's quite bare, actually. So here's the speaker and the power switch, and over here is essentially the whole brains of the keyboard, I presume. However, in order to lift this board up to get a look on the other side, I'll have to at least unscrew this one as well. Obviously, with cheap keyboards like this, they aren't going to give you any sort of ribbon disconnects. Um, everything is designed to be as cheap as possible. 
OK, let's have a look at the brains of the B Meowsic keyboard. OK, uh, nothing on this board. And there we have it. The entire keyboard, including the code, the instrument samples, and those 27 digitized songs, all live on this single epoxy blob. As for modifications, there's definitely not much we can do here. OK, so what I need to do now is I need to poke around inside of this thing and see if I can find a suitable line level signal. Now, I got to thinking about it, and I thought, surely I'm not the only one in the world who would want to hack one of these meowsick keyboards. So I looked online, and there was another guy, actually, who uh, hacked one, and he even put a schematic on there. But I don't want to use his because, in his case, uh, he actually put a toggle switch, and it disables the onboard speaker. And I really want to keep the onboard speaker going because the way that I record things, I like to be able to hear the sound out of the keyboard, too. So um, I'm probably going to find my own way to do it. Um, I need to make sure that the signal that comes out of it is suitable for uh, this guy here. And so uh, I might need to add some resistors or something like that, but um, we'll see. Let's get started. The first thing I wanted to try was tapping off of these speakers, since that has often produced good results in the past. There's some tape here I'll need to remove. And then I'll just stick these alligator clips on there. Here's the negative line. For the positive, I want to go through this capacitor like this. So I'll just attach the other leg of the capacitor to the speaker and, um, well, let's see what happens. I'll need to start some music, so I'll use one of the Witty Kitty songs. Here we go. And the signal is almost perfect, uh, but I was concerned that some of the other sounds might be too loud. So I tried a few other songs, and sure enough, some of them were peaking just a little bit. So I dug around, and I found this uh, potentiometer, and I figured this would work fine. It doesn't need to be perfect, as long as I can turn it down a bit. The question is, where am I going to put it? I mean, ideally, you'd want to find a flat surface somewhere, but this keyboard really doesn't have any flat surfaces anywhere. Uh, the closest thing it has to something flat is these sections on the ears. I mean, I suppose I could put the line output jack there and the volume knob there, I suppose. However, I think I'll try putting them on the back here, and hopefully they'll fit. Fortunately, I do have one of these Christmas tree drill bits now, so I can just keep drilling until the hole enlarges to the correct size for what I need. And there we go. The line output jack fits fine. And uh, I'll drill another hole over here for the volume knob. I'll go ahead and solder this capacitor to the positive lead on the RCA jack, like so. And then this wire here is coming directly from the volume control knob. That way the audio passes through the volume knob, then this capacitor, uh, before going out of the keyboard. And of course I'll solder my wires to the speaker, like so. And here we go, time to reassemble. So this is what it will look like. Uh, here's my output jack and the volume control. I suppose I should test this before screwing those million screws back into this thing. So I'll plug in my RCA cable and connect it to my computer. Let's give it a shot. OK, that looks good. Uh, let's try turning down the volume control a bit. Hey, that works better than I thought it would. It takes the volume almost down to nothing. So that's perfect. Well, let's try to record a multi-track song of some kind on it. Well, I hope you found that entertaining. Um, I have to confess, I cheated just a little bit. Uh, so it turns out there's no bass notes on this keyboard, and there's no way to transpose the keyboard. So uh, what I did is I ended up using the banjo for the bass, and I went into Audacity and I transposed the uh, that particular track down two octaves in order to get uh, a little bit of bass into the song. Um, so all the sounds did come from the keyboard, but uh, the banjo doesn't sound exactly like it would have directly from the keyboard. So hope you're okay with that. <laughs> I also wanted to mention that um, originally I was going to use one of the built-in rhythms to go along with my song, but uh, I didn't think about this until I was essentially done composing the song. Now, my song used um, three beats per measure, and none of the uh, rhythms on this keyboard uh, will do three beats per measure. They're all four beats per measure, so uh, I ended up just not using the drums at all. 
<laughs> anyway, I would get a big kick out of watching somebody play this on stage, uh, you know, hooked in with the line output and everything. That, that would be the most hilarious thing. In fact, uh, next time Anders Jensen's over here, I'm going to make him compose a song on the B Meowsic keyboard, and we'll see what he can come up with. <laughs> Okay, so just a quick edit here. I had already finished this video and uploaded it to Patreon, which I usually do a day or two early before it releases to the public. And somebody on there had mentioned that there is in fact a band uh, that uses the cat keyboard all the time and they're called the Double Clicks. And so I went to their YouTube channel and I watched some of their videos and I got a big kick out of watching uh, some of the uh, videos they've done with the cat keyboard. And so uh, I thought it was definitely worth a mention here. So you, you definitely go check them out. I will put a link down in the description field. Next up, I want to show you this little Casio SA9 keyboard. This is a relatively new keyboard. And let me show you just how tiny this thing is. Just as a comparison, here's another toy keyboard, which looks almost huge by comparison. However, it does have the same number of keys. The keys are just ridiculously small and pretty tough to play. Now, it is a tone bank, so it has 100 instruments to pick from and quite a few rhythms too. As you can hear, the sounds are all samples, so they sound pretty good. Here's another sound. It also has a built-in reverb of some kind. I'm not editing that in. And by the way, it has only two-note polyphony, as you can see. And even though it doesn't have many keys, at least the instruments themselves are properly transposed. So for example, the bass instrument is already in the correct octave range for that instrument. Well, I wanted to try recording something for you, so I went ahead and took this one apart. The keyboard is also mostly inside a single chip, as you can see. I drilled myself a hole for the line output, and I went ahead and assembled this off camera. However, one thing I noticed is that apparently this was designed with an output in mind, but it seems it was left out at the last minute. It'd be neat if I could find the exact correct jack to solder in place there. Anyway, here's my finished output jack. Doesn't look too bad. enjoyed that one and I hope YouTube doesn't flag me for copyright on there because uh, that rendition is almost a little too good to be true. In fact, I didn't cheat at all. Uh, everything that you heard on that song came exactly from this keyboard with no modification to the sound at all whatsoever. No, uh, no post rendering or anything like that. Uh, in fact, there's enough instruments on here. I could probably create some really interesting masterpieces on here. Um, so yeah, it's pretty neat for, for a toy. <laughs> Next up, I want to show you the Casio SA76. This is, in many ways, just a larger version of the keyboard I just showed you. It has most of the same instruments in the sound bank. However, as you can see with this comparison, the keys on the SA76 are much more reasonable size. Uh, plus, it has a few extra keys, and it is 8 voice polyphonic instead of 2. It also has a few manual drum pads, and of course your sound bank buttons. Also, it does have power and headphone jacks on the rear. I won't go into too much detail on this keyboard as I've featured it before in previous videos. I will mention that it has been seen on the Big Bang Theory in many episodes. Most of the time it's being played by Howard, although in one episode I did see Sheldon playing it. 
Considering this keyboard sells for $49 most of the time, it's actually a really good keyboard for the price. I mean, a lot of people are always asking for recommendations on uh, you know, what kind of uh, keyboard they can buy for 50 bucks, and really, this is about it. I mean, they're just, like I said earlier in the video, there just aren't a lot of keyboards in that price range anymore, and this this is really about the only one you can get. But, you know, it's actually not bad. You could, you, you know, you could learn to play keyboard on this. It's, uh, it's, it's not perfect, uh, but it's, uh, you know, it's pretty good. So up to this point, I have shown three keyboards that are toys, but they're they're fun to play with. They're useful. They're usable. Now I'm going to show you two more toy keyboards that aren't so much. <laughs> Let's start with this one. It's called the First Act Discovery. The thing is like feather light. It has no weight to it at all. It also has no external connections of any kind, not even a power port. The keys themselves are weirdly shaped. The black keys are proportionally too large. It's weird. Let's power it on. It does have some manual drums. It has only six different instruments. Let's start with the piano. Well, we can see it's only two voice polyphonic. None of the instruments sound particularly good. They all sound almost like the quality you'd get from a musical greeting card. The speakers are also terrible. I should also mention that, as you can see, some of the upper keys do not work at all. Well, let's take it apart and have a look inside. Wow, this thing is really bare inside. Looks like the mystery is solved as to why the upper keys aren't working. There's a crack in the board here. Well, I want to see the other side of this main board, so since I'm not planning on repairing this thing, I think I'll just cut these wires to make this easier. Well, there it is. I suspected it would be an epoxy blob, but I've never seen a white blob before. I simply can't recommend this keyboard um, for anyone at any age or any price. I mean, I mean, really, this keyboard is designed primarily to give to toddlers and let them beat on it. And to be honest, if that's all a person can do with a keyboard, they probably don't need to have a keyboard anyway. Um, unfortunately, the next keyboard I'm about to show you is not much better. So this is the Technobeat keyboard. It also has almost no weight to it. I'm pretty sure this thing was made for toddlers to beat on as well. At least it has plenty of keys, and the keys are decent size to play on. It does have 10 rhythms and 10 instruments. Most of them don't sound that great, but the piano isn't bad. It does have some manual drum pads. At first, it doesn't sound too bad, but there are issues. So the keys on this thing are just really hard to push. I mean, the amount of pressure it requires to push these keys down is, is absurd. So uh, that's something that's really annoying about it. And even though it has seven note polyphony, I mean, watch its behavior when I try to play something. So it's like if you push the keys at the same time, it's happy with that. But if you actually try to like play anything on here, uh, it just cuts in and out. So again, I wouldn't recommend this keyboard uh, to anyone for any reason, uh, unless of course you just needed something for target practice, or your car was stuck in the mud and you needed something to put under the tire to give it some traction. Um, you know, that's that's about all this would be useful for. If you're just looking for some uh, cheap keyboard to have some fun with, uh, I do kind of recommend the Casio SA9. You probably need to do a little modification to it, or even even the Meowsic keyboard. You can have some fun with this if you're just looking for an interesting challenge. Um, if you need a kind of useful keyboard for very little money that's modern off the shelf, um, I recommend the Casio SA76. Other than that, there just really aren't a lot of choices for low-end keyboards. Um, anyway, um, I do want to also apologize for the lack of videos on this channel lately. It has just been crazy the last few months, but I do have um, actually five new episodes, at least partially scripted, uh, for this channel. So those will be coming in the next few months, uh, so stick around for that, and uh, thanks for watching.